is highly misunderstood. It is not what people think it is. Uh, I see a lot of YouTubers commenting on a lot of these over Unity videos saying that you can't beat the laws of physics of conservation and all this. Uh, you know, when you start introducing technology and mechanics, you there's a whole different variation of laws that apply. So the point is, is to discover as to whether or not we can take a motor and run another motor off of itself. Basically, can you take a motor and run itself by the functions of that motor? When you look at the over unity law, uh, the over unity examples of what we've accomplished here with neodymium and magnets, yes, you can. And by video number 10, I'll show you a very descriptive electron dot here. Um, I started this little series on over unity is what it's about. So what I did in the first video was to give you a basic description of a very low power consuming engine that puts out a lot of work. It's something that is old technology as you saw in the video. It is very efficient. It takes a very small flame and turns this it into a This is a 10 part work. series. What I'm going to do is 10 videos and on the 10th video I'm going to description of over unity with magnet motors. So the first part was to give you a good understanding of how you can take a very small amount of energy and make a lot of mechanical movement based on, uh, but when you get into electrical motors, balance means a lot of things. It means the positions of your coils, it means the uh, size of your coils, it means the size of the wires in your coils, it means the bearings the on very the basic principle of the electrical motor, which is what the second video is going to be about the basic principle of an electric motor. You have one wire, you have one battery, and you have one magnet. A magnet always has a north and a south pole, period. If you have a very balanced magnet, it is the right length, because a short magnet is not gonna make a lot of spin on this motor, uh, depending on what size of a coil that you make. And then you look at this next video, which is gonna show you a lot about the electromechanics, is what you might call it. The important thing to remember is when you put this one wire from positive to negative on one battery, it creates a field that you can't see. But when you introduce a magnet, things will happen. Even if you just put a straight wire, uh, you know, curve it over from positive to negative, there's actually a magnetic field created there, but how strong is it? When you take it from positive to negative and you loop it several times before it gets to the negative, you'll discover that the field is increased in that loop. It's basically concentrated in that spot. So that's when you have a situation where you notice a lot of reaction between a magnet and that loop, which is not the wire itself. You're really reacting with the field. And that's why whenever you make a straight wire, a long straight wire, into a looped wire, which becomes shorter, like you'll see in this next video, and you put it on something that has very balanced low resistance, it'll spin. It's actually just following the magnetic path, trying to pull to a positive, push from negative, pull to positive, push, and it creates a spin. Now the simplicity of that, that little magnet wire still is a consumer of power, and it's quite a bit of consumption, really, even if you look at it on a small scale. The fact that when I have the Alnico magnet, and introduce it to the motor, it spins at a certain speed. But when I introduce the neodymium magnet, it spins at a much higher speed. So even on this little scale, it begins to spin when I introduce the, the neodymium magnet at such a rate that it can't even stay on the two beams that the motor rests on. It actually bounces to a point that it actually loses connectivity, which is more efficient actually because there's less power being consumed through the coal, but at the same rate, it, it's just such a much, much, much more powerful motor becomes that all because of one change, the magnet. Now if this magnet, which is a neodymium magnet, and it is a permanent magnet, it will not degrade, they say 20 years, it goes, most of, I've got magnets from 30 years ago that still work. They don't degrade as quick as you might think. The point is it has been constructed in a way that it doesn't degrade. Uh, it has uh, mastered the structure by which it can pull the electrons out of the magnetic field that exists and keep them created continuously flowing inside of that magnet. May it be an alnico, neodymium, or whatever. So the point is if you get a stronger neodymium magnet, well, uh, this is just basically not a more powerful magnet by the sense that it has a more powerful battery in it or it has a more powerful engine in it, that it is able to extract more of the electrons from the, the magnetic field that exists all around us.
So when you can take that and start to implement that, that's when you can start to see over unity. And by video number 10, I'll show you a very descriptive display of that. You can recreate the exact same experiment, do it yourself and have a really nice gadget. Uh, and that's basically what it's gonna be for now, a gadget. But don't fool yourself. This gadget, if you look at the gadget that's gonna be in video number 10, is being used all over the world already in large applications, producing power more so than what it takes to run itself. So it is not a joke. They actually have these motors that you're gonna see on video number 10 that's being used in large applications in a lot of places. Okay, I think that it's really important before you start trying to understand free energy that you understand the basic concept of the motor. Um, even I think even people that have studied this and have degrees and uh, know a lot about electricity need to kind of refresh their memory. I just think it's very important because what will happen is um, later on when I start describing some of the reasons why you can take and make a machine that puts out more power than it actually consumes, or creates the opportunity for you to get more power out of a machine than you actually put into it. So basically what I'm going to build is just a real simple magnet motor that starts with a coil. This coil is basically approximately a little over an inch um, in width. There's about 13 loops, there's 13 windings as they call it. Uh, you know, you literally can wrap it around something like this to get the actual form of the windings. And then if you want to know and mark down in your records how many windings there are, you just count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, you just count them. That shiny red stuff is an actual layer of insulation. It's tough, it's thick. Um, if you scratch any of this off in two places where they touch, it can cause a, a problem. So you want to be fairly gentle with it as you pull it off the roll. You can get it at Radio Shack. You can take it off of old parts and what have you. All right, you've got the windings and then the ends. You need to have these ends so that they're sticking off like that. All right, so in order to keep that coil together, what you want to do is wrap this around. few times and now my consolation is in the stardust so you get it to that point come off on the side here where stars are then try to do the other side the same way And what you're looking for is to try to get this one so that it cuts through the, you know, that it sort of makes a straight line through the middle. So keep wrapping it until you get it over there. Always try to balance things, try to make them the same number of windings, same number of wraps. Try to balance it out. Helps it too so it doesn't wobble. Alright, so you can see it's pretty straight, you know, pretty much goes through the middle over to the side. The way you can kind of play with it and test it is sort of hold it there at the edges and spin it. If that looks pretty much like it's centered, then you're good to go. Okay. And then you want to cut, trim these ends off. Balance it out a little bit so they're not so 
sticking out so far.